Hey guys, my name is Pixie and this is part one of the Fusion Table tutorial. In part one, we'll generate an API key, service account, and P12 file in the Google Developers Console. These credentials will be used to connect our Fusion Table to Appy Builder. In part two, you'll learn how to view, add, edit, and delete your Fusion Table data directly within your app. We'll need to copy and paste a couple pieces of information from the Fusion Table and the Google Developers Console, so keep Notepad handy and make sure you obtain all of the information throughout the tutorial. I don't recommend skipping through this video because you'll miss a piece of information that you might need. As always, check the video description for chapters and a link to download this project from the Appy Builder community. All right, so head over to the Google Developers Console and let's get started. If you decide you want to be an app developer, you'll be using this console a lot, so play around in here as often as possible to get more familiar with Google's APIs and services. Click on the drop down menu next to the Google APIs logo. This opens a dialog box with a list of your Google projects. It is not necessary to create a new project each time you make a new app, so let's make one main project for each of our Appy Builder apps that will use the Fusion Table component. Give this project a name. You'll be given a unique project ID by default, but you can change this ID by clicking the Edit button. Then click Create to create this new project. Your project takes about 30 seconds to initialize. Once it's finished, click on the drop-down menu again to bring up the project dialog box and set your newly created project as your active project. In the Google Developers Console, we have access to the entire Google library, but we need to enable the services we want to use for this specific project. Click on Library or Enable APIs and Services, both buttons will do the same thing. The library menu shows a list of popular APIs, but not every API is visible. Type Fusion into the search box and hit Enter. Then click on Fusion Table API and select the Enable option. The Pixie Bomb project now has access to the Fusion Table API, but we're not done yet. Click on Create Credentials or Credentials, both buttons do the same thing. From the drop-down menu, select Service Account Key. We need to create a new service account and give it a role. Essentially what we're doing is making a fake email address, also known as a bot. This bot will have access to view and edit our Fusion table. Set the key type to P12. This option creates a file that contains a private key associated with this service account. There's only one copy of this P12 file, so make sure you save this file to a location in your computer where you will remember it. The private key has a password that defaults to not a secret. You can change this password if you'd like, but you won't need it for your Appy Builder project, so just ignore it and hit close. The credential screen displays API keys you've created for this project. Copy and paste this key into Notepad so you can access it later, then click on Manage Service Accounts. Copy and paste the fake email address into Notepad. Every time you create a project in Appy Builder that uses a Fusion Table, you can use this exact same P12 file, the same API key, and the same service account. You can make a hundred different Fusion Tables and they can all be linked to these credentials. We're done with the console, let's head to our Google Drive and create the data for our Fusion Table. In the Google Drive, we have the option of creating a blank Fusion Table, or we can convert a Google Sheet to a Fusion Table. It's up to you what you want to do, but I think starting in Google Sheets is actually the easiest method. So let's make a Google Sheet. We want a blank spreadsheet, and let's call this Users. For this example, we're going to create a user table, just like we did in the Firebase tutorial. We'll need a user ID, a username, and a password, but let's also add email, points, and a column called Referral. Start by adding yourself to this data. Give yourself user ID 1 and fill out as much of the information as you want, but leave the referral column blank for now. Next, add about 5 to 10 users. This is going to be some dummy data. These users do not exist. We're just going to play around with this data. Make sure that the user ID and the usernames are unique, meaning you should not have two of the same user ID or two of the same username. Before we move on, add four user IDs to the first referral cell separated by commas. For example, 2, 3, 5, 7 means that these users installed this app because Pixiebomb told them to. It doesn't look like much now, but it will make sense later in part two of this tutorial. Close your Google Sheet and head back to your Google Drive. Click on New, More, Google Fusion Tables. You can start from scratch and create an empty table, or you can import the Google Sheet that we just created. So let's do that. Find the Google Sheet called Users and click on Select. Make sure that column names are set to row 1, then click on Next. 
Let's name our Fusion table users, just like the Google Sheet, and uncheck the option to allow export. Then fill in the remaining information with whatever you want. I'll just attribute this data to myself, add my YouTube channel, and give this table a description. And voila, our data has been imported. You can make changes to this Fusion table at any time. To manually add a new user, select Edit, Add Row. This will allow you to enter in more information about that new user. If you want to manually edit a row of data, click anywhere on that row and select the edit icon. You can also copy or delete a row of data. Each column has a drop down menu with options for that column. Changing a column opens up more options that are specific to that column. We can change the column name and even add a description. Note that the Fusion table automatically identified this as a numeric column when we imported the user's Google Sheet. We want our user IDs to be numeric, but you can always change the type to text if that's something you prefer. We have a lot of options for each column, but for this example, you'll only need to worry about the column name and the type. We're not going to change anything here, so click the back button and discard changes. We can edit all of the columns at once by clicking on Edit, Change Columns. You can reorder the columns by changing their numeric order. You can delete a column by pressing the X button next to the column name. Notice that we also have an overview of the column type. User ID is a numeric type, while username, password, email, and referral are all text types. Let's add a column to this Fusion table by selecting New Column. Change the column name to Avatar and keep the type at text. I'm also going to reorder these columns so that Avatar appears before Referral. Click Save to finalize these changes. I'm going to use the little animal icons from the TinyDB tutorial as avatars for this example. I had named those avatar1.png through avatar6.png, and I'm just going to randomly assign these users some avatars. All right, our data is complete. Click on the Share button in the top right corner. This Fusion table is set to Private by default. Change this option to Anyone who has the link can view. At the bottom is an option to invite people to view or edit this Fusion table. Make sure that Can Edit is enabled and paste the service account we created earlier. Uncheck the option to notify people. Remember, this email account is a bot. It's not a real email account, so we don't need to send an invitation to someone that doesn't exist. There are two main links to this Fusion table. At the top of the sharing settings, you'll find a link to share. Hit Done. If I copied and pasted that link into a new tab, it would bring up this exact Fusion table, but that's not the link that we need. Select Tools, Publish. Notice the difference between the two links. The Publish link only outputs the data in our web browser. That's the link we want to copy and paste into Notepad. Next, select File About This Table. Each Fusion table you create has a unique ID that identifies that table, just like the user IDs in our data. Copy and paste this ID into Notepad. All right, we're done with the setup. Let's head to Appy Builder and make sure we can connect our Fusion table to our app. Drag a Fusion table control onto the screen. We need three pieces of information, an API key, a key file, and service account email. These were all obtained in the Google Developers Console, and you should have copied and pasted this information into your notepad. Enter the API key and service account email in the Properties window. Then upload the P12 file if you haven't already done so. Keep the query at Show Tables and make sure Use Service Authentication is checked. Drag a label onto the screen. This is just going to be a test label, so it doesn't matter what it looks like. We're not going to do anything fancy in Part 1. This is just going to make sure you've correctly established a connection to your Fusion table. And if there are any errors, you might want to go back through the video and see what you missed. Okay, so head to the Blocks Editor and let's pull up some test data. Create a global variable called table users and set its value to the ID that we found in the about section on the fusion table. Drag the fusion table control dot got result event onto the screen. Set label one dot text to get result. We're going to output some test data when the app starts. You don't have to follow along exactly, but I would suggest playing around with these two procedures before we move on to part two. Open up the fusion table control. We've got some built in procedures that we can use to view data. We can get all of the rows for the specified columns, or we can set conditions for the rows and columns we want to retrieve. We have a table ID argument for both of these procedures. The table ID is table users. If we only wanted to retrieve the username and password, we would enter in username, comma, password. When this executes, we would see all of the usernames and all of the passwords. If we want to get all of the columns, we would type in all of our column names separated by commas. 
And when that command executes, it would look something like this. In both examples, we can see all of our data, including the column names. Let's replace this example with a condition. The condition is the WHERE clause in the SQL statement. In this case, let's say we want to get the username and password for Pixie Bomb instead of displaying every single username and every single password that's in our fusion table. To do that, we can set the condition to user ID equals one, and our output would look something like this. You can also add a web viewer component to the design, set the width and height to fill parent, and change the home URL to the publish link obtained from the fusion table. The app will show a table view inside of the web viewer component. You can click on a row and view all of the information about that row, click on the row again to return to the table view. But this is all really messy, isn't it? The table is structured, but there will be many times when users should not be able to see all of the data in your fusion table. So in part two, we're gonna structure our data so that we can pinpoint exactly what we want and we can output that data to different labels. We'll also be able to edit any cell, add a new row or delete an existing row from our fusion table directly within our app. Good job guys, we are done with part one. So don't forget to check out the Appy Builder community where you'll find more tips and tutorials. If you have any questions about projects that you're working on, you can always ask community members to help you out. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Feel free to comment below, subscribe, and thumbs up the video. Thanks for watching and have a great day. Bye!